Welcome to CFI Education at the Mill Valley Film Festival. I'm Melanie Nichols, CFI Education Program Manager. I'd like to welcome the director, writer, and editor of the film, Hero Soul, Maria Victoria Sanchez. Vicky was born and raised in Venezuela. As a young adult, she lived and studied in Europe. After completing her master's degree in animation in Barcelona, she returned to Venezuela to teach animation. Welcome, Vicki. Hi. How are you? Fine. Good. Fine. Happy to be here. Good. So where are you now? Are you in Venezuela? No, I am in Mexico. Oh, I am okay. living in Mexico right now okay. in a city called Querétaro, which is uh, like an old style city. Wow. Sounds beautiful. It is. So how long have you been making films? All my life, probably. <laughs> I mean, I was that kid that loved the camera and had always took pictures, a lot of pictures and videos if, if I could. And then I went to study it, what in Venezuela is called social communication, which is journalists. But I mm -hmm. studied the audiovisual uh, part of it. And then I, from then on, it was like short films, like, you know, students short films at that time. I think of uh, Hirasol as um, a kaleidoscope, a joyful, colorful, patterned story. And what techniques were used to make Hirasol? Hirasol is a mix of um, to the uh, it's a mix of two the techniques is we made it with after effects and we also made many things are made frame by frame in uh, drawing like the hands and the animals uh, also it has uh, very the the patterns the sun the moon are animated with expressions so we use many techniques to animate here so where does the story come from actually the story is from the mapuches are an indigenous group of this of south america mm -hmm. but uh, they live in the area that is now the border between argentina and uruguay and they have sunflowers there but i am not from argentina and uruguay and to me when i listened the story it was about us because where we come from where i come from this we don't have seasons we don't have winter or or fall we have like an eternal eternal summer mm -hmm. So the sun is the center of our lives. And I love sunflowers. And the story kept coming back and coming back to my mind. And so the story is Mapuche, but all the art that I used to make it as all comes from our indigenous group. We are called Wayunaiki. Mm -hmm. And the traditional art of 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 the of of Wayunaiki is uh, all over here. So, mm -hmm. in researching a little bit about you, I learned that storyboarding is very important to you, and in fact, you teach storyboarding. Can you talk a little bit about um, you know in the process of filmmaking why you feel it's important and. Um, what what do you teach when you teach storyboarding? Okay, I love storyboarding. I think storyboarding is the base of what an animation should be because storyboarding is a, for to me is the first edition of the film. And it's in a storyboarding without much money, you can see if the story is working or not, and you can see if your composition is working or no. You can see how are you gonna do transitions and how are you gonna cut without cutting, without having the raw material ready. And to me, 
it, in Venezuela, making a storyboard is not important, but because we have like uh, the style of working is that they do mostly live action and live action ways of pre -produ production don't always work for animation. Mm -hmm. And to me, like my, my examples are Kurosawa and Kubrick and Hitchcock and all of them wow. really put a lot of emphasis in doing story work. Mm -hmm. So it's my, my goal to teach my students and my team that they need to know how are they going to tell a story? Because if we don't have the resources, like we have to put more emphasis on pre-production in order to be organized mm -hmm. and to be able to know that we can tell the story that we want to tell. I even do memes about storyboard. Oh. <laughs> I, You're serious. I'm serious. <laughs> I, I also read that you uh, said that Venezuela doesn't have a tradition of animation. So it it's kind of a new art form, a little bit of an uphill battle to get it accepted in the culture. Is that, can you talk more about that? Yes, it's, uh, when I wanted to be an animator, the reason why I went to Europe is because we don't have animation schools and we don't have animation programs in cinematography programs. Mm -hmm. So there is no choice. You have to, if you want to study animation, you have to go outside. And, and that's why there are so few Venezuelan animators. Like I feel like I know them all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we are like oh, a bunch of- community. Yeah, we are, we, and at the same time, we are like uh, lonely wolves working, each one on their little corner of the world. And we are not a, a community that works together and we don't have a, a style. We have a, a few animators that make history in the country, but most of them study outside. Mm -hmm. So when I came back from, finishing my animation master in Europe, to me it was very important to teach others animation because I wanted to be what I didn't have. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to gather a small community and to be able to help somebody else to become an animator. and. Mm -hmm. That was also the point of Girasol, to give my students the chance to try themselves and to become animators doing something. Because we have also- have students working on the film with you. Yeah. yeah. My half of the team in Girasol were my students that, I, that, that we train to do filmmaking and animation. It's something basic in my work that I, that everything I do has to needs to have an educational side, so I can do for others what I would like somebody to have done for me. Nice. How long did it take to make the film? A it's year. A six, six minute film. Yeah. Six minutes. Yeah. So it took a year, and it was with with the students, as you said before. Yeah. Like I started to give uh, workshops in animation and I started to gather a group of students that love, that, you know, they are like the ones that wanted to really learn animation. So those ones, I took them and we put them on the project. We gave them computers. We gave them a bunch of other kinds of workshops, okay, because I am not enough. As a teacher, we gave them production and training in programs, and it took a year to get them trained, and then it, it took less, less than a year, and then we took three months for animation, and we edit in wow. 15 days. Wow. That's pretty fast. It sounds long, but then when you're actually doing the animating and the editing, it's pretty fast. Yeah. And what was what do you think was the biggest challenge in doing this film? 
working in the con we didn't have it's hard to explain but at the moment we were having huge problems with the venezuelan situation in general yeah. we didn't have water mm. on the offices we had many power shortages during the production mm -hmm. we had many problems getting food for the team like those were a nightmare I was doing so many jobs, like going to the market to buy food and trying to buy, to find food for the team because we cannot have uh, six students and ask them to pay for them, their own food. Like we needed to give them transportation and food and everything and fighting the Venezuelan situation fighting the political sense and also the general emotional depression right. because everybody will tell us you cannot do that you cannot do a short film an animation short film here now you cannot do that and that was an uphill, an and uphill. A film. yeah yeah that's so um, since you work with young people a lot, um, what, what's your best advice that you feel like you give young animators who you know, want to do and create like you do? Well, I think... Other than storyboarding. <laughs> yes, you should storyboard. <laughs> uh, I think you should put your emphasis in learning, drawing, and learning everything that and knowing that it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of effort it's it's not gonna happen one day to the other you need to put yourself in through fire in order to become an animator because it takes patience and you you need you need to love it you need to really love it because if not it's not going to work because it's 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 a long timeline yes like in order to become like a professional animation you need years of mm -hmm. experience and learning and watching movies and watching animation learning drawing learning the programs learning animation theory and also learning from the masters mm -hmm. it takes time and I am not going to lie and say, do it, it's fun, it's easy. No, it's not easy. It's very fun if you have it like in your heart. If you love it, it's fun. And do you have a next animated film that you're planning or writing or? Right now. Along with? Yes. Right now I am trying to set an animation studio for my students, mm -hmm. with my students, where um, it's it, so we can work remotely uh -huh. and they can all, because we are all, right now we are all refugees oh. and we have all immigrated to different parts of the world, but we have studied all together. over, but you're still a community of teachers and students. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And mm -hmm. now we want to set the studio in order to teach and also to produce. I am, right now I am finishing the storyboard for my next short film. And also we are doing the pre-production for an animated series for TV that we want to sell in the future. We are very hopeful. And, but we know that we are, we come from a third world country and we speak Spanish and we are not powerful, we are not Disney, but we want to be able to have a voice and to tell the stories that we want to tell. Vicky Sanchez, director of Hirasol, thank you so much for joining CFI Education at the Mill Valley Film Festival. Yeah.